Hi, everybody. This is Karen Jackson from John Leaps Evangelization. I welcome you to the nationwide prayer campaign to end abortion forever. Today we have Richard Mahoney, and uh, he is, uh, it's always hard when he's on because he shows the truth. And sometimes the heart, the truth is very hard to swallow. So um, let's get on with prayer now. And um, thank you for coming. Hi, everybody. Karen Japson here. I have Richard Mahoney. Um, he's going to be giving the presentation today. He is the founder of the American Holocaust Museum, and he has been a staunch um, supporter of the pro-life movement. In fact, this morning, he came from um, the, uh, an abortion mill, as he always does. And, um, you know, he's fighting for that fighting for lives and he will be giving the be given the presentation today as i said so hi richard viva christa ray viva christa ray it's the american holocaust memorial uh, american the and the holocaust uh, memorial and the pro-life sign of the natural conception and it, uh, uh, it's a great with great sorrow i speak today after watching to kill their children. But I want to start out with this. Uh, my good friend Michael McGlean produced this three minute video um, to be used by everybody who wants to use it uh, before November. Because this, the fate of our nation will be determined in November. But I want, you know, he is actually told to turn down, and he didn't actually use the exact words of St. Faustina because many people and the, and the Christians hierarchy lay people thought it was too rough but i'm going to read you first the real words the exact words that our lord said the sister faustina saint faustina in her notebook it's the fourth notebook of the diary and it's paragraph 1276 1276 she states september 16th 1937 I wanted very much to make a whole way hour before the Blessed Sacrament today. God's will was otherwise. At 8 o'clock, I was seized with such violent pains that I had to go to bed immediately. I wanted to make a whole way hour. Okay. I was convulsed with pain for three hours. That is, until 11 o'clock at night. No medicine had any effect on me, and whatever I swallowed, I threw up. At times, the pains caused me to lose consciousness. The Lord had made me realize in this way I took part in his agony in the garden. And he himself allowed these sufferings in order to offer reparation to God for the souls murdered in the wombs of wicked mothers. That's the words our Lord used. To make reparation to God for the souls murdered in the wombs of wicked mothers. I've gone through these sufferings three times now. They always start at 8 o'clock in the evening and last until 11. No medicine can lessen these sufferings. When 11 o'clock comes, they cease by themselves, I fall, and I fall asleep at that moment. The following day, I feel very weak. This happened to me the first time when I was in the sanatorium. The doctors couldn't get to the bottom of it, and no injection or medicine helped me at, at all nor did I myself have any idea with what the sufferings were about. I told the doctors that they never, that never before in my life had I experienced such sufferings, and he declared he did not know what sort of pains they are. But now I understand the nature of these pains, because the Lord himself has made me this known to me. Yet when I think that I may perhaps suffer in this way again, I tremble. But I don't know whether I, I ever again will suffer in this way. I leave that to God. Whatever it pleases God to send, I will accept with submission and love. If only I could save even one soul from murder by means of this suffering. This is going to be a very hard talk today. And, I'm, and we're doing this talk not to make those who have actually partaken in this sin or those who partaken in this Holocaust, but to bring us to conversion. 
before you can cure the disease, you have to name it. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, in her prayer practice at President Clinton's day of prayer, she had these words to say for the president at that time and to all of us in America. And these are the words she said. Please don't kill the child. I want the child. Please give me the child. I'm willing to accept any child who would be aborted to give that child to a married couple who will love the child and to be loved by the child. From our children's home in Calcutta alone, we have saved over 3,000 babies from abortion. These babies have brought such love and joy to their adopting parents. They've grown up so full of love and joy. She went on. Any country that accepts abortion is not teaching its people to love or to use any violence to get what they want. It is a poverty to decide that a child must die so that you may live as you wish. America needs no words for me to see how your decision in Roe v. Wade has deformed a great nation. The so-called right to abortion has pitted mothers against their children or women against men. It has sown violence and discord at the heart of the most intimate re human relationship. It has aggravated the de derogation of the father's role in increasingly fatherless society. It has betrayed the greatest of gifts, a child, as a competitor, an intrusion, an inconvenience. It has nominally accorded mothers unfettered dominion over the independent lives of of their physically dependent sons and daughters. And in granting this unconscionable power, it ex has exposed many women to unjust and selfish demands from their husbands or sexual partners. Human rights are not a privilege conferred by government. They are every human being's entitlement by virtue of his humanity. The right to life does not depend and must not be declared to be contingent on the pleasure of anyone else, not even a parent or sovereign. As John Paul II said, a mother that a nation that kills its own children is a nation without hope. Mother Teresa goes on to say, but I feel that the greatest destroyer of peace today is abortion because it's a war against the baby. A direct killing of an innocent baby, murdered by the mother herself. And if we accept that a mother can kill even her own child, how can we tell other people not to kill one another? How do we persuade a woman not to have an abortion? As always, we must betray her with love. We must remind ourselves that love means to be willing to give till it hurts. Our Lord gave his life to love us. So the mother who is thinking of abortion should be helped by love. That is to give until it hurts her, her, her plans, her free time, her respect for the life of her baby. The father of that child, wherever, wherever he may be, must also give until it hurts. By abortion, the mother does not learn to love but kills even her own child to solve her problems. By abortion, the father is told that he does not have to take any responsibility at all for the child he has brought into this world. The father is likely to put another woman in the same terrible trouble. So abortion just leads to more abortions. Any country that accepts abortion is not teaching people to love, but to use violence to get what they want. This is why the greatest destroyer of love and peace is abortion. What is taking place in America, Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, is a war against the baby. And if we accept that a mother can kill her own child, how can we tell other people not to kill one another? National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. This breaks my heart in many ways because this speech was given 23 years ago. And even worse has happened in those 23 years. I cry to think I've been in front of death camps, murder mills, for 40 years plus now. When I first, the first day I went in front of a death camp, broke my heart, it was like McDonald's. Assembly line killing, just nonstop, just car after car coming in to drop off to kill. But the saddest part back then was, it was mostly women who held their head down who were in a terrible situation, usually were encouraged by their boyfriends or husbands to kill their child. And, and all of the abortionists were usually white males. Now, now, women go in laughing, joking, praying like it's a party, 
say you know, after they kill their baby, they're going to go out and get pregnant again so they can do another one. They say that uh, fathers don't have any rights over their child. If I can kill a child anytime I want, they call their child a nuisance, an intruder, a, a, a burden, a pain, a parasite. Instead of loving the great gift that God has given to them. You know, God never makes a mistake. How blessed is the fruit of the womb. It's not in the Heavenly Father's plan that any baby should be torn apart in his mother's womb and be killed at these death camps. Worse yet, now most, and I mean, in fact, the two abortionists that operate that I know are African American. One is a woman from Nigeria who's part of a big family. The last couple of have been African American and who now are, are screaming, screaming that Black Lives Matter, but nine out of every 10 children that go into that death camp that I pray at are African American. Killed on the altar of sexual perversion. Perversion. And no pastor, we haven't had any black pastor in 40 years come out and remonstrate. Don't do this. Black Lives Matter. But no, there's none. And sadly, these poor, poor women who have no leadership, no clergy, to warn them of the horrors that will be afflicted upon them. God said to Cain, sin is knocking at the door, but you can be its master. And what did Cain do? He ignored God. And he went and he killed his brother Abel. And what was the, what was the punishment? A curse. That's probably called the curse of Cain and the curse of Judas. One of betrayal, one of murder. It is so tragic. Now, we had a Fourth of July just recently, and you know, one of my great heroes in this country is Judge Roy Moore, who has held many posts, not all the posts, great posts in Alabama. And this great man never compromised his Christian faith. You could have met Louis in his office. He wouldn't let him tear down the Ten Commandments. He wouldn't let them do uh, marriages other than a man and a woman. And, and, and he would not allow all the perversion that humanity and America cries for. He wrote this poem, and it's so beautiful, and, and we read it on the 4th of July. America the beautiful, or so you used to be. Land of pilgrim pride, I'm glad they never you see. Babies piled in dumpsters, abortion on demand. Oh, sweet land of liberty, your house is on the sand. Our children wander aimlessly, poisoned by cocaine, choosing to indulge their lust where God has said abstain. From sea to shining sea, our nation turns away. From the teaching of God's love, and you need to always pray. We kept God in our temples. How callous we have grown. Where the earth is but his footstool, and heaven is his throne. We voted in a government that's rotting to the core, appointing godless judges who throw reason out the door. Too soft too soft to place a killer in well-deserved tomb, but brave enough to kill a baby before he leaves the womb. You think that God's not angry? There are lands a moral slum. How much longer will he wait before his judgment comes? How are we to face our God from whom we cannot hide? What then is left for us to do but stem this evil tide? If we who are his children will humbly turn and pray, seek his holy face and mend our evil ways, and God will heal from heaven and forgive us of our sins. He'll hear our sickly land and those who live within. But America the beautiful, if you don't, that you will see a sad but holy God Draw his hand from thee. Praise God for men like Judge Moore who still fight for our country, fight for the beauty of our country. We have, uh, let me turn next to uh, a message that I want to give. And, and we're going to go into a lot of things today. You see, how much time do we have? Because maybe we'll have to skip this for another um, day. How much time? To do we have um we have um five minutes <laughs> six minutes I mean, okay but, but you well could, then we're, you gonna, could we're go gonna make we're gonna make uh this another talk let me go to 
you wanted me to go to the pictures, yeah. uh, let me go to those real quick here. To go over those just quickly, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll just touch on before we, we close up. Okay, the first picture is of an innocent baby, eight weeks old, who uh, they actually made a video of this picture. Because this baby was actually crawling around and moving and, and trying to suck its thumb uh, when it was out of the womb. And um, it shows, shows just it shows the beauty, the beauty of God's infinite creation, even at eight weeks. How lovely, beautiful arms and legs, eyes and nose, and brain that is already formed. And, um, you know, just God's beautiful creation. Now, the next photo, the Center for Bioethical Reform actually goes around the country bringing graphic pictures of abortion because... Until we see the horror of abortion, just like the media always shows horrors, why? So we can condemn them and fight against them. But, you know, it's sad in this country, uh, we look at all types of atrocities, Nazi Germany, the communists, and, even, and then we have pictures of the KKK. But do we ever show the pictures of Planned Parenthood? No, no, never. We never show the horrors of Planned Parenthood. We show every other Holocaust, oh, every other aberration, as you'll see in the next pictures. We show genocides, Cambodian, Korean, Armenian, Nazi, Stalin. We show, But we don't show the victims godless abortion. We say, we say uh, that a moral wrong, a wrong, murder should be a constitutional right. No, no, this is madness. And, you know, we have to seize on the opportunity. We have to pray for our bishops because there's several people that have gotten up in this country in the last few weeks and held America accountable. We hear in the last couple of months the cry of racism. No, that's not the sin of America. The sin of America is sin. And the sin of America is not, not realizing that sin is the only thing that it can slave a human being. The only thing that can make him truly, truly a prisoner. You know, I want to say this because now that everybody's screaming, and, and, and hey, listen, I'm not sending a message other than this. Every life matters. Not just black lives, not just Caucasian, not Asian, not any type of nationality or country or culture. All life from the moment of conception to natural death is sacred. And what causes all the sins of the world? It's our sinfulness, our selfishness. Without the grace of God, we can do nothing but evil. We are a Christian nation. We who... 99% of the people go into murder mills, death camps to kill their own children, say they're Christian. That's madness. You know, it breaks my heart when I see priests speaking out in the pulpit this week about racism, but not the millions and billions of babies are being slaughtered by this country. In this country and worldwide through Planned Parenthood, Bill Gates, Pulp, you know, Turner, Buffett, uh, all the UNICEF and World Health Organization, all that mass murder. You know, years ago, I asked a priest to say this prayer. And uh, and I'll read this prayer. This is two, two or four points we make before we leave. I say, Father, after Mass, can we say this prayer? Most blessed and afflicted virgin, queen of martyrs, who just stand generously beneath the cross, beholding the agony of thy dying son. By the sword of sorrow, which has pierced thy soul, and by the sufferings of thy sorrowful heart at the foot of the modern-day Golgotha abortion clinics, I kneel before thee to compassionate thy sorrows, and to lay my petition with childlike confidence in thy wounded heart. I beg thee, O my mother, to plead continually for our state and our nation with thy son, since he can refuse thee nothing. And through the merits of the Spirit, his most sacred passion and death, together with thy own sufferings at the foot of the cross, so touched his sacred heart 
that we may obtain deliverance from this demonic scourge of contraception, abortion, and sexual perversion in our land. Offer to our Lord Jesus but one drop of his precious blood, but one pang of his adorable heart. Remind him that thou art our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Now we'll obtain what we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hail Mary, Virgin most sorrowful, pray for us. So I asked the bishops and the priests if we could say that after Mass. And they said, oh, no, no, we don't we don't say any prayers after Mass. That's uncomfortable. But guess what? For the last five, no, for the last ten years, this is a prayer we say after Mass. <laughs> after refusing that, this is the prayer we say. Oh, God, Master of this passing world, hear the humble voices of your children. The Sea of Galilee bathed your son's command when he calmed the stormy waters and delivered the disciples from fear and harm. During this hurricane season, we turn to you, O loving Lord, for your mercy is without end. Spare us from the tragedies like those of the past and keep us safe from your loving care. O virgin star of the sea, we ask your powerful help. Plead for us with your son that we might be spared all harm and walk safely in his footsteps till we reach our heavenly home. O lady of prompt succor, pray for us. Now, this is a very nice prayer, but guess what? That's praying against wind. Instead of praying against a holocaust, sexual perversion, and the destruction of marriage and family, we're praying to protect ourselves. We're praying, God, God, I don't care how many babies have died. I don't care how much violence is in the streets. I don't care how much violence they're tearing down statues. I don't care how many people have to die and how, how low and we come, but please protect us from sin, from viruses, from everything, anything that would harm us physically as we plunge into hell. Let's pray for our priests who are chastising priests who are telling the truth about sexual perversion, about demonic organizations, communist nations like Antifa, Black Lives Matter, and all these other organizations that shield behind that they care about life, or they don't care about life, they care about themselves. Now, for the last thing, we have um, a very good pamphlet that we should, everybody, now that we're speaking of racism in this country, this is a very good pamphlet. Heritage House put it out, 76. It's called The Right to Enslave and the Right to Kill, according to the U.S. Supreme Court. The Dred Scott decision, 1960, 19, no, it doesn't have to date. The Dred Scott decision said a slave is a property of the owner and can be bought and sold or used or even killed by the owner at the owner's discretion. Although he may have a heart and a brain, he is maybe a human life biologically, a slave is not a human person. That was a 72 decision by the Supreme Court. According to Roe v. Wade, an unborn baby is the property of the mother. She can have the baby killed by abortion. This can be done at any time until birth. And now, according to Governor Cuomo, any time after birth. Although she or he may have a heart and a brain and be a human life biologically, an unborn baby is not a legal person. Roe v. Wade. They said in Dred Scott, a black person can only become a legal person when he or she is set free. For this time... We should not concern ourselves about him because he has no legal rights. We say in Roe v. Wade, a baby can only become a legal person when he or she is born. Before that time, we should not concern ourselves about he or she because he has no legal rights. If you think slavery is wrong, nobody is forcing your own slaves. That's the common thing. But don't impose your morality on someone else. We say in abortion. If you think abortion is wrong, nobody is forcing you to have one. But don't impose your morality on us. But Martin Luther King answered that. I'm not putting my morality, morality upon you. I'm here to restrain the heartless. Eleven years later, 1968, so that was 1957, Dred Scott. Eleven years later, in 1968, the 14th Amendment was enacted to right the dreadful wrong of slavery. They were wrong then. It Over four decades have passed, actually four, almost five decades, since the Supreme Court made it the infamous abortion murder decision. How many more yields will be killed and go on? They were wrong then, they are wrong now. Both seven to two decisions by the Supreme Court. 
Margaret Sanger called African Americans weeds of society to be killed before they were born. She paid off black pastors to send out the message that they just wanted to help the black people. Why is Margaret Sanger's statue still up and those who defended freedom and life statues are coming down? Because these are anarchists. These are people who do not care about life. They hate themselves because they're in sin and they hate others and they want moral and, and physical destruction. We cannot but tell the truth. We have sinned as a nation. We have thought only of ourselves and we only care about our own safety, our own luxury, our own comforts. But a nation that kills its own children is a nation without hope. Between now and November, we will repent. We will do penance. We will offer the holy sacrifice of the mass for the end of this Holocaust. And we will ask God to pity us and have mercy on us for killing his innocent babies. Or we will be a nation without hope. We will continue this on another day. Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. God bless Very you hard, all. hard to see all this stuff, but it's the truth. And we have to acknowledge the truth and we have to beg God to give us courage to speak the truth because the only thing that can defeat evil is the truth. Amen. 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 Viva Cristo Rey. Our Lady of Guadalupe. Pray right, for us. Our, our nation. Our Lady of Guadalupe is the patroness of the Americas and the babies in the world. Amen. And all of those, and all of those who are oppressed. So I would suggest Black Lives Matter go to our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lady Guadalupe, and then they will be truly free. Amen. Amen.